Losing is the worst. I mean, there's nothing quite like lining up that trade. And before you even get to start imagining the new life this trade is bringing you closer to, whoop, 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 chart does a 180 and it starts marching towards your stop loss with what feels like a personal vendetta. And we know, we know what losing feels like. Today, I want to talk to you about the one thing that traders avoid like at all costs, and that's losing. I've heard everything from like a paper cut to the utter breaking of one spirit and soul. But what is a loss really? Is it when we get knocked out of our position? Is it when we lose money? <laughs> is it when we see red on our PL? I mean, yeah, yes. <laughs> but it doesn't have to end there. And every loss is a lesson. And if you allow it to be, that lesson can become a traffic sign in our minds, warning us of the outcome the next time we find ourselves on this imaginary road. Generally, you enter a trade expecting the stock to go one of two ways, up or down. That's the crossroads. And for some reason, when we choose the correct path and the outcome is favorable, we tend to just like accept that as the expectation. And there's very little fanfare for not taking a wrong turn. However, when we choose the wrong path, and the outcome is negative, well, that we hold on to. We attach those negative emotions to the loss, and that further clouds our judgment with doubt. Instead of that endless cycle that, I mean, really does not get you anywhere, let's start using those losses as a roadmap. If you can find the lesson in the loss, you'll be highlighting future hazards, traps, that you won't drive right into next time. Use that loss as a traffic sign of sorts, a heads up, allowing you to choose the other path, the profitable path on your next go around. Taking pause, reevaluating, finding the error, implementing change. This isn't something that you don't already know, but it can be easily sabotaged by emotions. Hurt feelings, harsh things that you think to yourself, those only further cloud your judgment. And the reality is, those things that you're saying, they're just not true. I mean, feelings aren't facts. So you lost a trade. You're not a big dumb dummy, and we both know that you're not. I mean, seriously, a trade can go wrong for all kinds of reasons, and sometimes for no reason at all. Sure, you can be early to the trade or late. You could buy the top, and you can definitely short the bottom. You can do all of the no-nos, and you can do them a few times. But if your strategy is solid and you're following your plan, those won't be the reasons why you lose. Those will be the lessons to which you'll never need a follow-up lecture. Like, you're good. You've got it. All good here. <laughs> and the reality is, is that you can't win every trade and you don't have to. If you ask the almighty Google what a good win rate is, you'll see that professional traders average around 50% win-loss ratio. So get comfortable taking that quick L and getting back into the game with focus, intention, and gratitude for the lesson. Because every single plan will lose sometimes, like it's built in. And what that statistic does for me is it allows me to change my framework for winning. When I win, it's simply my turn. And when I lose, it was simply someone else's. So as long as we both keep playing the game, emotionless and with intention, we're in an infinite money loop. And I mean, dude, that's pretty sweet, actually, <laughs> you know? So I know that changing your mindset is easier said than done. And trust me, my mental framework for trading did not start this way. I was in the trenches in my mind, just like you may feel you are right now. So how do you get there, right? When emotions run high, it's best to take a step back and ask yourself, why are you upset? Is it being wrong or is it losing money? Because whatever the reason, it will essentially boil down to fit into one of those two camps. Heck, it can even be both. I mean, maybe you despise being wrong or feeling out of the loop or feeling left behind. Maybe you have other mouths to feed or your knees are getting really darn tired of your nine to five. The reasons are endless and personal. But at the end of the day, you're either not cool with being wrong on this trade or you feel that you cannot afford the loss. 
For me, in the beginning, it was definitely both. But the one that took me longest to kick was being wrong. You know how they say the apple like doesn't fall far from the tree? I was the apple too stubborn to drop in the first place, just dying on the branch. But I'm telling you, as soon as you kick these negative emotions associated with trading and replace them with gratitude, trading will become a lot less exciting and a lot more profitable. I'm going to give you a few action steps that you can take to get your mentals in check, as they say in the NFL. (laughs) So these are ideas that I've gotten from my trading mentors, money and life coaches over the years. And I've put these exercises into practice. And any reformed mentee who has tried can attest that they actually do work. So if your poison is being wrong, a fear of being wrong, Put yourself in a position to lose outside of the market. This can look like a friendly wager on a game that you're no expert at. This could look like a spirited game of trivia against strangers. Bonus points for live in-person trivia and resist the urge to use your phone. You know who you are. My favorite and the one I remember most as it's burned into my memory. And honestly, the one that helped me get over being wrong the most was karaoke. I tried to cheat the challenge. I'm not going to lie. I did try. And I chose a song from my childhood, thinking the words would just flow back to me, (laughs) but they did not. So midway through, my friends flooded the stage to help me through the performance. And it was rough. The song, Who Let the Dogs Out? (laughs) That's all I'm going to say about that. (laughs) So if your poison is a fear of losing money, and this is going to sound crazy, But the only way to get comfortable with losing money is to essentially lose more money. Wait, wait, wait. Don't turn off the video. Let me explain. Is it losing if you give it away freely? That's the reframing that we're going for here. Turn the idea of losing money into the idea of simply lending or loaning the R to somebody who needs it now, knowing that when you need it, the R's will be there for you to collect. If you're still with me, you're wondering, all right, well, how do we get there? You can donate to charity in a way that is truly impactful to you. We're not talking about rounding up your change at Starbucks. We're talking about that entire Starbucks budget going to charity instead. What you'll find is that, sure, you'll miss the money at first, but your mind is so resourceful. I bet you a Starbucks coffee right now that if you commit to this, somehow without you even realizing it, you'll have found a way to donate and still have your Starbucks coffee. By week three or four of the challenge, you'll start to realize that money always seems to come around when you need it. Now, I found that to be a somewhat polarizing statement, and I'm not saying that life is easy breezy, but I am saying that you are stronger, more capable, and far more resourceful than you imagine. My absolute favorite action step you can take today to combat your fear of losing money has nothing to do with giving money away. In fact, it's the opposite. I want you to hit the ATM and then tuck a $100 bill into your wallet or your money clip. And this is not to be spent ever for any reason ever. The purpose of this $100 is to serve as a little boost of abundance every time you go digging for a plastic payment card. And what this did for me is it made me realize how much I could buy, like all the time. With a single $100 bill, I could get 61 apples on the spot. I could get 112 ounces of peanut butter. I could get 32 loaves of bread. Like I could feast on a peanut butter and jelly lunch for the whole summer with a single $100 bill and I could even have milk. Look, I know prices are on the rise and the dollar doesn't go far, but dang, I feel like a queen with $100 cash in my pocket. And the reality is if you can participate in this challenge, You should be drowning in gratitude because you're crushing it. Were there times that I thought I'd need to spend that $100? Yeah, of course. Over the years, life happens. But in the end, a profitable idea was always there when I needed it most. Be it a winning trade, another life skill, a learning opportunity that led to another moneymaker, the easier path would be to crack the $100 bill. But the fruitful path lies in practicing gratitude. So I'll ask you again, what is a loss? Is not a trick question. There are so many positives in the process of losing. 
So we can't internalize a fat L every time we lose on a trade. Instead, a loss is when you give in to your base instincts and break your plan. Not when you lose money, but when you go off book. Practice gratitude the next time you find yourself in a losing trade. Thank the market for the opportunity because now you know exactly what path to choose next time. Print that chart, study it. Next time you see that set up, oh, it is on. Tip your imaginary hat to the trader who gets to bring home a slice of the pie today because if you just follow your plan, your slices are on the way. And who knows? Maybe they have the extra delicious 2R whip topping to reward your patience. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know how you're doing with these action steps and how that gratitude is feeling on you. I'm always reachable by email, arabia at reallifetrading.com. Take care, friends.